Hello, I'm Bob the Booker and welcome to my channel. Uh, today I'm just wrapping up the books I've read this week um, and it's been a really fun one. Uh, lots of books that I've really thoroughly enjoyed, um, so really excited for these actually. Um, I mean, I say that like I'm not normally excited like a little puppy about everything, but uh, it's been a good one and I think, you know, just looking at just the ones I've got physically here, these have been some absolute delights to read um, and I read a few advanced copies as well of some books which have just been so, so so wonderful. So let's get started with those. So the first book I wanted to talk about is Amélie Nottum with First, um, and this is translated from the French by Alison Anderson. Um, and I was given this in person by the wonderful Anne Novella, um, who is fairly new on Booktube, and you should definitely go and check out. She is wonderful. Um, we met in Brussels. Um, I gave her After Sappho. She gave me First, which is very kind of her. Um, partly because we've been talking about Amélie Nottum as a as a Belgian author, a really prolific one, but who I'd never read. Um, and this was just such a little delight of a book. It's a very short book, probably about 80 pages or so. Um, and it follows the trial of Jesus, essentially, in the lead up um, to sort of his final days. Um, and well, before he's put on the cross and all of that. So it sort of follows some biblical stories, but also deviates in some really interesting ways. And on the back, somebody describes it as being a bit like um, a remarkable mix of Mel Gibson's The Passion of the Christ and M Monty Python's The Life of Brian. <laughs> and that is exactly how it feels. That it sort of it turns incredibly serious and powerful. There's sort of this poignancy of this man kind of, you know, saying, I actually, I can't perform these miracles on demand like this what do you want from me? Um, and then these other moments where it's just funny and bizarre and it leads to this trial scene that's kind of ridiculous and farcical. And it's just such a delight of a book. It was just so fun and so interesting. So thank you, um, Anne Novella, and please do check her out. Um, I think she definitely deserves some love um, on Booktube. She's really interesting and has sort of really clever insights on books. Um, and it's just a nice person um, as well, which helps. Uh, but yeah, um, really, really enjoyed this very short uh, sort of punchy little book um, which just yeah I think something I'm I really appreciate about the writing was just how it kind of just constantly moved through the scene it sort of was very filmic it was really beautifully done I thought so yeah really really enjoyed this Next, I spoke about this in my Booker B-Sides video, um, but this is Erasure by Percival Everett. So shortlisted for this year's Booker for The Trees, and this is a former, another one of his books from before. Um, and this is just brilliant. I absolutely loved this all the way through. It's incredibly funny, incredibly scathing, but very challenging and difficult in other ways as well. So a, a real smorgasbord of a, of a book in many ways. The, the, the main focus and kind of concept of the book is that, um, we have a central character called Thelonious Monk, who is a sort of a tongue-in-cheek name because that is the name of a sort of, of a musician and sort of these other things, but he is sort of, he does it with a sort of straight lace. He is a, um, an academic. He is, he's sort of written a few books and the books that he has written are very sort of high level academic and whatever, and they don't really sell. But suddenly out of the blue, this, this book becomes, a, another book becomes a massive bestseller. And it's written by um, a woman who is from sort of Northern US, um, writing about the South um, and kind of, you know, all of the all of the black folk in the book speak in a really kind of almost stereotypical Southern kind of way and Thelonious at the heart of this book finds this ridiculous and is like how is this selling millions it's particularly selling millions to a very white audience who think who keep on talking about how authentic and raw and real this book is and so he um is kind of like well this is ridiculous and he as a joke writes a book um uh, originally called uh well it sort of changes title a few times but the eventual the eventual title is is F as in the, the word, not just the letter. Um, and he, it's just really funny because he writes this absolutely ridiculous book, which is in the book. So 80 pages of this book is a fake novel. Um, and it's just so absurd because it's written as sort of like this absolutely unrealistic character. Well, he sees it as unrealistic. Other people are like, wow, so raw and real. Um, but actually, you know, even you, you, you know, you're primed from the beginning that you're, that this book is going to be a parody, as in the, the the eighty page book within it, because this this man has three children, all of whom are named after various forms of headache pills. So you've got like Tylenola, I think it was, 
um, for like from Tylenol and like aspirin from aspirin. And I can't remember the third one now. I think it's a US brand that I didn't quite recognize the name of. Um, and so it's clearly ridiculous, but then it, it starts selling massively and he has published it under a pseudonym. So it has to then suddenly do this whole act thing. Um, and something I didn't mention in the Book of B-Sides video as well, which was something that I found absolutely hilarious about this book really early on, is we see one of the papers that he delivers at an academic conference. And it is written to be intentionally just so hard to read. And it's, you know, we as the audience are there like, this, this means nothing to me. And somebody comes up to him afterwards and wants to start a fight because like how dare you how dare you say those things about me and the 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 my form of post postmodernism um and it's so absurd because you're like how could you be offended by this it's like the least personal attack ever it's just some stuff that doesn't even make sense but that's the kind of brilliance i think of this book is it's so tongue in cheek and so scathing um, and make some really intelligent points about race and about kind of this notion of authenticity because you know Thelonious Monk is a black man but he's working in academia and so everyone tells him he sounds white and all of these sorts of things so the question of authenticity comes up a lot but particularly the the sort of later part of this book where it goes into this this other fake book was just so clever and so funny and I really do urge you to check it out it's a brilliant brilliant book and yeah, so that was one of the three five stars, uh, five star reads I've had this week. The second being Sean Hewitt's All Down Darkness Wide, which I'm going to do a separate video about because I just love this so much. This, genu not, not just saying this is hyperbole, may be one of the best books I've read this year. Um, I've been anticipating it for a long time. I bought it the day it came out. I started reading bits of it and then put it down because it was so beautiful and I wanted to be in the right frame of mind. I didn't want to just gulp it all down in like in one day. I wanted to sort of read it when I was only really ready for it. And I just adore this. It's a really lyrical memoir that talks, so, so Sean Hewitt um, being a poet, this is his memoir talking about um, a series of relationships he's had and particularly a couple that were um, especially poignant in his life. Um, it's sort of Sean Hewitt working out his own sexuality and kind of coming to terms with it alongside um, dealing with the, the mental ill health of um, one of his partners, which makes up a, sort of a big chunk of the book. Um, and it's so tenderly done. The writing is just exquisite. It's easily one of the most beautiful books I think I've ever read. Um, I just, I was constantly just bowled over by the language. I just thought it was stunning. Um, and then at the heart of it is just such a raw and beautiful and sensitive tale of him talking about everything that's happened within this relationship, you know, trying to rescue somebody from a pit that they don't really realize that they're in. Um, and all of these sort of these moments where he's trying to find himself and so that every, every, everything else sort of falls apart and it's, it's I'm really underselling this because this is just it was incredible and I, I don't really know how much more to how how else to describe it without either ruining it or without crying um this is exquisite this is easily one of the most fantastic things I think I've read and oh, I'm gonna get emotional but the way he frame the way he is able to capture things like queer shame um body image mental health um uh, like feelings of inadequacy all of those things is just sublime um and yeah i i'm really glad i gave this book a bit more time i didn't try and gulp it down all at once because this was exactly the right book at the right time this week where i think i was just a bit sleepy uh, but also really wanted something gorgeous and i sat in bed and i finished this and i just loved it and it's beautiful and i'm gonna stop there so on a less emotionally fraught <laughs> line let's talk about some of the other books i read and these next three are all advanced copies that i had um two of who two of which have actually come out already so i'm a little bit behind um and one of them which is still to come and the one that's still to come is lucy by the sea by elizabeth strout um obviously she's just been long listed well shortlisted for the booker with o william this is the fourth book in that series so this this follows o william and in many ways does a lot of talking about the relationship with william and with Lucy. Um, but it is around COVID. And whereas, you know, we're still not far away enough from it, I think that I can really that easily read books about it. 
I did think this book was incredibly beautiful with how it did it. It's incredibly haunting and sensitive. I found the first half of this book especially really beautiful with the way that Lucy, as a character who's sort of been established from these three books, suddenly just finds everything that she thought she knew being turned on its head. Um, she's really struggling to find her place and find how she understands the world within everything. Um, she is really nervous about what's coming up locally you know suddenly not being able to see people or spend time with people face to face is incredibly difficult for her as it was for for many of us um and she sort of starts becoming quite wistful and thinking back on life um and that sort of is also part of the the story about her relationship with william is sort of what does it mean for their relationship as well um i i think the second half for me was still strong, but I think I just didn't engage with it quite as much. I think there was something so, so starkly beautiful about the first half and how it engages with COVID, with lockdown, with um, isolation, with all of those things that felt really well observed to me, just really cleverly done. Um, and Lucy is the sort of character who's quite anxious and also a bit oblivious and all of these other things. Um, really worked, I think, for that narrative. There's also, I don't think I remember it in the other three um, Lucy books, the Amgash series, but Olive Kitteridge makes a, a fleeting appearance sort of referred to. So they're in the same universe, which I hadn't really expected. Um, but yeah, really, really beautiful nonetheless, and is due to come out in early October. Um, I'm going to do a separate video on it as well. And then the other two advanced copies uh, that I finally got around to reading a little bit late. Um, the first being Lessons by Ian McEwan. And again, I will do a separate video on this because um, I have thoughts. Uh, mostly I did really enjoy this. I have read everything by Ian McEwan. I really love him as an author. I have found his last few books hit and miss. <laughs> and Lessons felt like more of a hit. So I'm I'm really grateful for that. It's a long one. It's about 500 pages. Um, but I think it, it sort of wears that quite lightly in some ways. It sort of, it doesn't feel too, too much like it drags at times, at least for me. Um, but it largely concerns this young boy called Roland. Um, he is looking over his life, um, but we get glimpses of when he's a child and he's playing the piano and his piano teacher essentially is in some kind of, well, she starts getting overly familiar, let's say. It's, it becomes an abusive relationship in that sense. And um, later in life, he reflects on it and is able to have these conversations. And I think there is so much of the kind of classic Ian McEwan here that I really loved. So Ian McEwan at his finest talking about historical moments and connecting it to the personal and all of these things, which I really, really enjoyed. And then there are the bits that I, I enjoy less about particularly modern day, recent uh, Ian McEwan, which is going off on a little bit of a political rant in a way that feels like Ian McEwan is in the book instead of it being the characters, right? You know, it starts as a, a fairly decent sort of a, a character kind of describing something. And at some point you're like, okay, this is just Ian McEwan now using this as an opportunity to, to, to bash various political figures. And whether I agree with him or not, and in many of the cases I do in this book, um, it still feels too much like a self-insert. And I think I found that quite off-putting because it sort of felt like okay do you need to like this book i think was strong enough without it but I, that's the that's focusing probably too much on the negative i still think there's a a really grand sweeping story here that really looks at the whole life of a person who grew up in political instability you know his younger years are shaped by things like nuclear war um the, you know, the threat of nuclear war things like the um, cuban missile crisis all of those sorts of things and it kind of traces it through you know things like the the fall of the berlin wall and um and uh things like into the modern day like covid and brexit as well so there's a lot going on but i think and i think that's again where McEwen i think is really strong in sort of these big sweeping narratives of sort of going over historical moments um i just it feels like he's like McEwen, the McEwen i know and love uh, i say that from only from his books um feels like there's a bit of a return here which i, I really enjoyed and last but not least, my third five-star review of the week. Um, it does seem like I'm giving them out like candy, but at the same time, I think the three books I've given them to really deserved it. So there we go. Um, and this was Babysitter by Joyce Carol Oates, which came out in August. And I just absolutely loved this. I um, It was another book where I started and took a little bit of a break, only because I think I was... 
I was traveling around quite a bit and was having really short periods of reading. Um, so that really suited short books, not a 450 page book like this one was. Um, and so I sort of finally came back around to it and was reading more of it this week. And Babysitter, as the name suggests, uh, features a, a character who was referred to as that, but in a very different way to what you might expect a babysitter would be. In fact, this book is largely around murder and, and abuse and all these other things. Basically, any kind of content warning you could think of for a book is here. <laughs> it's a hard one for that, right? We cover pretty much everything. But I think what is such a brilliant strength of this book is the way that the the writing style mirrors so much of what's going on. It's an incredibly cold and detached narrator at times, and that really fits with this feel of the book. And I'm 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 such a sucker for form and purpose, a form and function um, meeting each other when it comes to um, to writing, and particularly for something like Babysitter, this felt like there was a a real coldness that almost mirrored those sorts of like crime documentaries. Um, and it, all the all the way through where, where you know children are going missing and are turning up or we have really intense graphic descriptions of people being attacked or killed or abused or whatever else there's a lot going on in this book um all of those moments were still dealt with so masterfully i thought in terms of the writing style i think um I've only read, this is only my second Joyce Carol Oates book, and um, something that I've really appreciated in the two I've read, which have admitt admittedly both been quite dark ones. I'm not sure if that's just a trademark Joyce Carol Oates thing. Maybe it is, we'll see. Um, but yeah, incredibly, sort of a withering description of a character in one or two sentences and then moving on. But those two sentences being everything. Um, at one point she describes um, somebody as being an upright rat. Or something I'm like oh my gosh what like that's an incredible description that's brilliant I like, guess that actually entirely suits this character that we're just meeting um, and so I thought that was fantastic a really grim book like don't go into this thinking this is gonna be a fun book this is 500 like 450 pages of some of the most miserable stuff that you could imagine would happen in a book with very few moments of reprieve but I think it's so masterfully done that I was really hooked. I almost missed train stations um, because I was really absorbed in this book. I was just so blown away by how it was done. So yeah, really, really excellent book this. And uh, yeah, I really want to read more of hers now. Um, and <laughs> luckily, she has a lot. <laughs> so, you know, take your pick. There are about a hundred and something books to check out from her. So uh, we'll see. Um, but those have been the books I've read this week, um, which have been a, an interesting mix, some quite brutal dark reads in this, but also some quite light and quite fun ones. So um, yeah, it's been fun. Anyway, I've been Bod the Booker, talking about books and stuff that I've read this week. I hope you've had a great reading week and a great week generally, and I'll speak to you all soon. Take care. Bye-bye.